afternoon. Uh, tonight we have a very special guest, Kay Womack, and she's going to talk about uh, one of our service organizations in St. Genevieve, which is St. Vincent de Paul. And then uh, we're supposed to have another guest, but he hasn't showed up yet. So, Kay, you want to introduce yourself and tell a little bit about you, and then you can start talking about St. Vincent. Okay. All right. Well, my name is... Uh, do, just look over here. Yeah, you can say it over. Okay. Uh, I, uh, my name is Kay Womack, and I've lived in St. Genevieve uh, going on six years this year. And I have, uh, along with my husband, uh, we have two children. We have a senior in college at uh, Missouri S&T and a senior in high school at St. Genevieve. And I've worked with, as a volunteer with St. Vincent now for five years. Been that long already. Yeah, it's hard oh, to believe. God, it's hard so to believe. Fast. Yes, it does, it does. And uh, I, I did have uh, a little information. I didn't know if you would want to ask me questions about it or if you just wanted me to talk about it. You can it. just talk so. and say what you want. Yeah, if we want to. We might throw some questions. questions. Okay, <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> well, um, just, uh, just real briefly, I started working with St. Vincent de Paul sort of through a, a funny accident. I lived next door to Nancy Fisher and needed to donate some furniture. And so she called uh, Neil Weiner and Butch Siebert and they came over and asked me what I did. And I said, I volunteer. So that was that. But, um, and the volunteer started. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and, um, but we're one of at least five uh, food pantries here in St. Genevieve County. And uh, Saint, just a little bit of the, the history, St. Vincent de Paul of St. Genevieve County was uh, reorganized in 1983 by Father Gregory Schmidt. And uh, there is also a location that operates out of St. Agnes Church in Bloomsdale. And uh, we pretty much serve our location and Bloomsdale's location serves all of St. Genevieve County. And uh, we offer to the, the members of the county uh, food and personal items. We offer furniture, uh, assistance as needed with utilities, rent, uh, prescriptions, auto repair, just pretty much anything that there's a bona fide need. And uh, then we also started, I guess it's been about two years ago, a commodity supplement uh, program through uh, Southeast Missouri Food Bank. And that's for 60 and over, and there is an income qualification for that program. So if but, anybody's interested in that or needs that, you're listening or tell your friends, mm -hmm. they can call uh, the Parish Center, which is 883-2731. Yes. Okay. And uh, just a few of the, uh, the places we get our food from or the donations. We, we have food drives. Uh, various organizations in the community have food drives for us. Uh, Valley and St. Jen, our two school systems, have food drives around homecoming so soon. And uh, <laughs> the girl, right. <laughs> girl Scouts and Boy Scouts have, uh, the Girl Scouts have their April showers, which is for personal items that are donated. And then the Boy Scouts have a very large food drive in November, coming up in November. And uh, the post office or the postal workers have their drive. And uh, the Rotary Club here in St. Jen, and then also through private donations, we'll get food and, and uh, there's several thousand dollars go out every month, isn't there? Well, last year, just as an example, we spent, St. Vincent de Paul of St. Jen County spent $69,000. Wow. Assisting people and uh, with everything that I mentioned, mm -hmm. as well as when, when we, when our food supplies are very, very low, we have to buy food and personal items right. through these funds. And these funds are donated funds, grant funds, and uh, I think there was a collection once a month at St. Genevieve Church and then mm -hmm. at St. Agnes. And Although St. Agnes operates, St. Vincent de Paul and St. Agnes or Bloomsdale operates uh, separately from us, pretty much, you know, the way the county's split up. But uh, we are serving right now about 115 families or more per month. And uh, that's quite a few that's families. That is. Yeah. Quite a few families for a, for a community this of this size. And the numbers have increased substantially. They have, they have. Yeah, each month they, uh, or each year I should say, they've really, we've seen a huge increase of, 
And this year, so far this year, we have spent uh, a little over $31,000. We don't have as much money to spend, so that really controls what we can, right. what we can provide as well. So and if anybody uh, out there wants to donate money? Yeah, call Barry Center. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. And then um, the, uh, we do also, our food pantry also uh, receives commodities from uh, USDA. And that's through the Southeast Missouri Food Bank in uh, Sykeston now. And uh, we receive those once a month. We never really know what we're going to get, but, you know, it's always welcome. And uh, that's really the only part of our food that it has an income requirement with it. Yeah. The, otherwise, the food that's available at St. Vincent de Paul is available to anyone, except for those USDA foods that right. we have an income requirement on. And um, we, we do also raise money besides donations. We, we do solicit some of the local businesses. And we have a garage sale twice a year. And uh, then we have, as I said, we have uh, the monthly co collections and private donations as well. And uh, the raffles, yes, we have the raffles two times a year, I think, too. Right. And just to give you a, a little idea, too, we're located right now at 60 South 3rd Street. Uh, it's in the rear of the Bovary Building, or the Valley Band Room, as a lot of people know it here in town. And uh, we're open uh, the first four Thursdays of the month from 9 to 11. And uh, the participants can come in, and they can come in any of those Thursdays, but they are only eligible for food once each month. But then there's clothing there and uh, some personal items that, that really people can come and get anytime. The shoes, clothes. It's a very nice selection of clothing. Yeah, there is. Mm -hmm. There is. And it changes, of course, every month. Right. And then uh, probably most people have heard we'll, uh, we'll eventually be moving around the corner, but we're not really sure when that's going to happen, when the, the, the uh, Rosier building, when, when that construction's finished. Anything else? Pretty busy process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes it. We make it sound pretty simple You're when we. In the we, we, we are in the back, in the back, in the back. It, and uh, yeah, we're really excited about that because uh, because of course the the Bovary building is is limited in size and it's limited in just access altogether. It's difficult to get in. It's crowded and. I was going to say it's hard to get back there. It's you know it the is. parking is bad is. and the parking is bad and you've got this little narrow mm -hmm. alley to go through. I call. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we do share the parking space up. with the courthouse, mm -hmm. so if there is a, a mm -hmm. large court case, it's pretty difficult to find parking it is. during so this that time will be period. Really a lot mm -hmm. simpler for everybody. It is. It is. And also at this time of year, I might point out that uh, a lot of the local gardeners will bring in uh, extra produce. And we we'll, we have that available on Thursday. I was going to ask you that. Mm -hmm. We have cucumbers right now because it was an, <laughs> an abundant crop, I think, for everyone. So uh, th that's really a neat thing, though. Whether we'll have tomatoes or cucumbers or and we squash. Have one there that brings eggs. And yes, we do have a every citizen month, in the county. Does, mm -hmm. If possible, he'll bring in eggs, and we try to divvy those up. So it's first come, first serve, of course. But uh, we try to give out quantities so everyone can have some. Right. some of the produce and some of the eggs but, but uh, otherwise it's I suppose if anyone has any questions they could contact the Paris Center. Paris Center or if you have any questions right now on the screen the numbers up there 883-7675 you can call and personally ask Kate that's she right can try that <laughs> yeah really Which I'm sure she can. you can try my notes here and see if I have to drive for food? Uh, the next uh, food drive should be, uh, we have to coordinate with the schools, but it should be uh, uh, both homecomings. Okay. So I think That's those good. both happen in October, I'm pretty sure this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll just uh, consult with the, the superintendent at St. Jen and then Dr. Gilligan at Valley and get that organized so we can uh, hopefully have a good food drive and, and help supplement. And I should point out too that if if people have, it, you know, it's only one or two cans. You don't have to buy a case of food to donate. You know, every can helps. You know, every mm -hmm. box of 
crackers or cake mix, anything like that helps if you find something you have in your home or if you've come to the food pantry and have food that you can't use or, or don't like, then uh, you can always donate that back. As long as it's you know within its expiration. And if you have things in your cabinet that's about ready, it's like a couple months or so before they expire, pack all that up and bring it because somebody makes use of that. Oh yes. Like right away. Oh yes. Yeah. So. And they always have a really nice selection of food. We're we're really fortunate. We're really, people in the community are are extremely generous. And, and what we get from the government too. Mm -hmm. That's always mm -hmm. very healthy food. It is. It is, and it's it's just we really appreciate the you know what the community does for us, and uh, the support through all of the food drives. It's just amazing, you know. And the, and I can't forget the personal items, the Girl Scouts. Right. We really. That really helps. Uh, yeah, it, it does. It does. I see, my, I see my little bags on the door, and I just open up the closets and just start up. Yeah. <laughs> start up in the bags. And they also take clothing donations mm -hmm. to make we sure should. they're laundered and. Mm -hmm. Nice and clean, and I've given quite a few clothes. We do. We take. We do. Uh, we take in quite a few clothes, and they go out the door as fast as they come in. So it's especially now with school starting, right? Because we do have so many families with children, and and we've just seen a huge increase in the population in Saint Genevieve. I think over the past year, so um, you know we have a lot of new recipients coming in. So it's a neat program. It is. I'm great. happy. I'm happy to to be a part of it. And you're well, thank you. You're it's a very a welcome job. person to be there. Oh, too. thank you. <laughs> you have a lot of education and you know a lot of things. Well, it's it's fun. I like it. It's we love fun. volunteers. Yeah. <laughs> True. And, and and part of this, I think, is is uh, really important that um, that our community realizes that uh, the Saint Genevieve Parish. You know, has a commission uh, towards social ministry, and um, it is part of our uh, our Christian mission right. that is uh, to help those um, that maybe need uh, a little support. And you know, so as we continue to move forward and even uh, create a more hospitable space and a more um, uh, relevant space for for this really important work. Um, that the people who have dedicated a tremendous amount of their time are in a in a place where they can offer the 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 type of services um, that um, is reflective of our Christian ministry too. Right. And it's really important. Yeah, most of the, the most of the churches in town, Hope Church and yes, they have yes. they have pantries also. Hope I believe that Baptist. we have uh, yeah First Baptist Church and uh, Hope and then the Presbyterian, the Presbyterian Church does. And as far as I know, uh, uh, Pastor Adam and Mary uh, Pearson at St. Mary Church are still mm -hmm. St. Mary Baptist Church. I'm, that's not the, the official name, but the the Baptist Church in St. Mary. Mary. And uh, and I know that the the pantry at uh, at the First Baptist Church has really grown, and and it's really nice that we can all help because and they they coordinate with each other yeah, most of the time because too. we can't give yeah. someone we can't give a family food for a month. There's no way. I mean, right. we just we don't have the means, and and they don't have the means for that either. So, it's uh, it's nice that so many of the the groups in town that are the able to do all that. Together, mm -hmm. comes together to serve yeah. the people. Exactly. I think one of the when, most more important things is that with the new location and the proximity to Valley Catholic, that we will be able to integrate some of our, uh, the good work that is being currently done and allow our students to realize that this is part of life is giving back. Okay. And so as we go through a kind of an integration process of, 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 of bringing our students in, in it, you know, I think they know it's being done and they respect it's being done, but it'll give them a more opportunity to maybe even have a hands-on, and if not hands-on, a visual, a visual experience of the good work that is being done now, and serve as, as, as a um, kind of a beacon for their lives. Yes, yes, and we do have... There's kids that come down. There are, there are uh, the children that, uh, during the food drives at both Valley and St. Genevieve, they'll bring, the, the kids will bring the, the food items they've collected down, and... Uh, then we have sometimes we'll need volunteers. My son volunteers when he can, and then we'll have some of the students 
come down from uh, from Valley Catholic and, and help out when they can. And it is neat because they do need to realize that, oh, they might even know someone who comes into the pantry and it makes them think. It makes them think, oh, you know, I guess I guess I need to be aware of that. The way I look at it is that at any given day, I could be the person who needs to come in and get food. And so that's just how I try to, you know, that's sort of my principle. That's what I keep in mind is when I go into the pantry that it could be me. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know. You never know. And anybody out there is welcome. If you, like if there were so many people laid off a couple years ago. Exactly. And we had numerous people that came in for a short time. Mm -hmm. And we like people to do that. Oh, that's, that's. I mean, that's yeah. what we're there for is to serve. Mm -hmm. And we have, and we still do. We still have some, uh, I know even some friends of mine that have, that have fallen on hard times, you know, I just, I have to remind them, that's why we're here. Right, you know, exactly. come in, come and in. Don't, don't be embarrassed no. if anybody's listening. Don't be embarrassed yes. to come because nobody knows that you've been there. No. Except and the people that are sitting it. there, nobody yeah. says exactly. exactly. You know, I, I think in my, my previous 20 years of having a recruiting and staffing firm, a regional recruiting and staffing firm, I came to realize that everybody is just a little bad luck away from needing the services mm -hmm. uh, of a St. Vincent de Paul. And, um, and it's just too bad that we um, don't have a shared knowledge of, of that, that boost that St. Vincent de Paul gives and the difference it makes uh, that allows people to do something to get back on their feet because there's a lot of success stories along the way but they just continue to do their good work day in and day out. And it's, it's, a, it's an untold story in our community. And I guess we should introduce you while, oh. since we've okay. all, yeah. yeah. we yeah. all joined in the yeah. conversation. Yes. Uh, yes. This is Joe Roger, and he is the uh, Director of Development at Valley Catholic Schools mm -hmm. for the parish. So mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure everybody probably knows him. He did have him and his brother Jack Myers had Rosier. Yeah, where the where the story? The Rosier building, the, yeah. Where the building <laughs> yeah. is, yeah. where the new building is going to be. Yeah. So. yeah, and you know, and I appreciate the invitation to kind of uh, talk a little bit about uh, this. You know, for the you know the last twenty years, I've been uh, prior to that, I had the Rosier stores, and then for the last twenty years, I had a company called Workforce Employment Solutions. We sold that in May of two thousand thirteen to a company based out of North Carolina. And I was uh, visiting with my sons in, um, in Boston, and, uh, and we, we became very philosophical at the Sam Adams Brewery. And, and they said, keep your heart and head open, something's gonna make sense. Um, because I said, I just wanna do something that has meaning and giving back. Because I feel very fortunate to be able to have moved back to St. Genevieve, raise our kids, and, um, and live the sort of life that I dreamed of. And so um, when Valley Catholic and St. Genevieve Parish approached me, I thought it was a gift. And I didn't realize it was a gift that I was going to be back in, in uh, overseeing a number of projects, one being uh, the store that used to be a family store, um, but um, a, a lot of other development, strategic planning and things like that. So uh, today as we, as we talk about the what uh, uh, many people refer to as the Rosier Building, um, you know, the, uh, there's many components that I think is, is not just exciting for the school and parish, but exciting for the uh, St. Genevieve community. I agree. Um, I, yeah, you really hear nothing but good comments about, oh, finally the store's going to get fixed up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. actually, what is the name of the building? You I mean, know, and, and that, yeah, you know, Iris, that's a good... Yet? That's a good uh, question, and people refer to it as the Rosier Building. Right. And, I, and my feeling is, we can come up with a better name than that. You know, we can absolutely. <laughs> well, it'll always be the Rosier Building. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of like that is yeah, always right. Wimpy's, and this yeah, is always exactly. Cattings. And, <laughs> and we, uh, but there, there, you know, as we're looking at things, there's there's probably a name there um, within, and and I've uh, we've done some uh, looking about you know. Uh, the uh, Christianity in the Mississippi Valley, and you know people like uh, uh, Pierre Marquette, and thing, you know, there's or maybe some relevance within the, you know, the early pastors who helped, um, you know, in in our Christian mission, 
And so we don't necessarily know what it's going to be. So right uh, now it's just Valley Catholic School. It's, well, it's, it's the parish. It's a parish center. Oh, and, okay. and so I think one of the things, it's, it's important, and I'll kind of go through the components of it. Um, holistically, it's the uh, St. Genevieve Parish. Individually, there are probably five components of that. There is St. Vincent de Paul, which we, we discussed. And, you know, I, I don't think we, we can ever, um, um, it's a very relevant part of our community. And I think that the community, that, uh, a community that gives back is a community that has heart. And a community that gives back is a community that has compassion. And so I think St. Vincent de Paul is, and the other um, uh, uh, pantries in the area are, um, I think is a good indication of, of our character. Uh, so St. Vincent de Paul will have an expanded resources, walk-in coolers and things like that. Um, in addition to that, um, there will be an early childhood development center. And unless we prepare, yeah, it's, it's, it is a, um, it will be for three, four, and five-year-olds. So three-year-olds will be the preschool, four-year-olds will be the pre-kindergartner, and, and uh, there will be two kindergarten classes associated with Valley Catholic. And so, you know, as we prepare our youth, and as we prepare our community, and we encourage in, uh, young families to move back, we must be able to offer them the sort of resources that young families, um, demand is a strong word, but desire is probably more appropriate. You know, young families that are moving back to St. Genevieve, you know, they're looking at several things, uh, quality of healthcare, quality of life, uh, you know, and certainly education is one. And it, education doesn't start anymore when you go to kindergarten. Yeah. Education now starts at, at, preschool. at preschool. And so I think uh, the Valley, Catholic Early Childhood Development Center will be the state of the art. And it will be a, um, uh, you know, competitive with anything that you, you see throughout the country. And, and we're so excited about being able to bring these resources to our community because the young families, our future, need and want this. If we're going to attract uh, the families of tomorrow, today, then we better offer those sort of amenities that are going to take care of their families. So the Early Childhood Development Center, as we took a tour uh, through there today, will be an outstanding uh, facility. And it will uh, integrate about 100 students. And, and we look forward to the time where we have to add on. In addition, there will be a Parish Banquet Center and uh, if, if those of you that know uh, where the old store was, it was the clothing store. Right. And, and so it will have um, a venue that will, you'll, be, you'll be extremely proud to have part of downtown St. Genevieve. It'll have exposed ceilings, it'll have drop lighting, uh, hardwood floors, it'll be beautiful. Good. And now are they going nice. to rent that out for banquets and weddings? Yeah. It'll be an internal external, so uh, those individuals that are contemplating weddings. Um, I was just going to ask you that. Yeah, and, and part of this is that we're very respectful of, of the venues in the area that have serviced our community for many years. The Knights of Columbus, the Elks, the American Legion, the VFW, some of the newer ones like Chaumette and Twin Oaks and things. Um, our, uh, we encourage people to continue to look at those where we're going to, we're going to have our own identity. We're going to be able to, um, you know, hopefully create a kind of a cool environment downtown in St. Genevieve that uh, will become a destination for um, um, not only just weddings, but business, you know, uh, um, community events, uh, as well as parish and school events. So. One of the things downtown St. Genevieve has missed for many, many years is a gathering place where, right. where people it. can gather and celebrate or people can gather to commiserate. Um, but either, either way, I think it's going to be an, 
extremely important because there's power of people getting together. And I think the St. Genevieve Parish Banquet Center will serve that purpose. Um, yeah, we'll have uh, wedding receptions and uh, we'll have external caterers that will come in. Certainly I'm not a cook, nor am I uh, a wedding planner, but currently I'm kind of serving in some of that capacity, not very well. Um, there is going to be a kitchen there. Though, there that? will be a prep kitchen. Yeah, and so caterers will be able to come in and utilize the prep kitchen. Um, upstairs, uh, where you see today, where there's beautiful new windows being put in, uh, there's a gallery area uh, where, you know, is, it could be used for meetings, social, family gatherings, things like that. It's going to be a beautiful area, and it's almost a panoramic view of downtown St. Genevieve. And so when you go up to a second floor and you look over St. Genevieve, you get a unique perspective, and it's going to be something that I think that those of us that have great appreciation for St. Genevieve will enjoy it, and those that have not seen it will be sort of um, enamored by what they'll see when you stand up there and see this panoramic view of, of what you know we see as our downtown area. Uh, there will be a, a performing arts center up there. Uh, when, when you, uh, we're very fortunate to St. Genevieve High School has a wonderful performing arts, oh, gee, wonderful performing arts. What we, if they're Broadway, this will be off Broadway. And kind <laughs> of, and you know what, uh, in New York City, uh, both Broadway and off Broadway <coughs> have succeeded uh, uh, and have flourished together. And so this will be kind of more of a boutique sort of, um, um, performing arts and so I think it will be really really fun to have that in the downtown area not only for the Valley Catholic Schools but for uh, other performers and uh, it could be a great gallery for local artists you know um, so it's going to be very nice and our band will now have their own space and over the years they've bounced around different they places have. they've been everywhere and they've been everywhere yeah. They can sing that song. We've been, yeah. We've been everywhere. <laughs> and so there will be a fitness center also toward the very back where, you know, the, uh, the Valley Catholic kids have gone down to the basement oh. of the Bovary building. Yeah. And so it's not necessarily are you looking for a palatial sort of uh, fitness center, but it's really about putting our kids in a safe environment. Exactly. And that's I think right. that's the most important thing. So, And, and they won't be, it, it just always made me so nervous that, that you know, as we were opening up the food pantry, we'd always have all the little kids coming yeah. through, and 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 you know, it's they always had good guidance, but they still were crossing those streets. And now, if they don't have to do that, it just takes one element, makes one element safer, right. just right off the bat. Yeah. Right off the bat, yeah. I think it'll be it'll be really good. So, in in kind of in the business perspective of this you think, well, how will this benefit? Currently, there's probably about three and a half million dollars of investment happening in downtown St. Genevieve. The greatest amount of investment that has ever occurred in downtown St. Genevieve. Uh, so, and I'm talking about the Audubon restaurant and, and the St. Genevieve Brewery and, and, and the, um, the Parish Center. So I can't think of a more exciting time uh, in our history. And so, um, as we look at this, we think, well, how will this benefit the overall business climate? Well, as we look at caterers uh, for the banquet hall, we're looking at the Audubon restaurant or Station 2 Cafe or the other restaurants in the area. When you talk about having wedding receptions and business gatherings, it's going to help the, uh, the hotels and bed and breakfast and and then if you talk about weddings, will it help the florist in the area that will be able to offer all these things? So when you do this, we hope the entire community is raised by a project like this. And, and so it's very exciting times, and I feel very fortunate to be able to be part of it. And um, I, I think the goal of, of this is uh, how do you how will this bring people together? You know, and I think this is going to be one of our primary goals is that it will be 
a, a, uh, a cornerstone, not only of just the downtown area, but of St. Genevieve in general. And, and those of us that have been kind of around a while, you know, our store used to be where people gathered. You know, they'd come in for holidays and, and, you know, they'd be milling around the stores and meeting friends and families and stuff. And I think this is taking it to another level. And I said, it, I feel um, it was a gift to be able to be involved. And so it's just kind of weird uh, that the stars were aligned that I was moving out of something uh, and I was asked to move into something that I have a very strong passion about. So. It's a weird circumstance. It's <laughs> a very beautiful building. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. And, you know, every day, you know, incrementally, you know, cool things are happening. And when cool things happening, it makes people talk. And when people talk about something positive, it becomes um, contagious. And Enthusiasm is a very contagious part, but so is negativism. Right. But there's so many positive things currently happening, even the most negative people have to see this as positive life. I agree, I agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, I was just, uh, my uh, son was in town and uh, he was ordained uh, a month ago and he's stopped by before he heads to Ann Arbor, Michigan and, and, he, and he just looked and said, there's so many cool things happening in downtown St. Genevieve. He said, I'm very proud of everybody kind of recommitting themselves to this. And, you know, and I, I said, you know, we have to do it, Mike, because I was felt very fortunate to be able to move back to St. Genevieve uh, as, as, as a young man, raise my family in an environment that I think was really uh, conducive to preparing kids to go out and chase their dreams. And I think our legacy is to be able to do this for the next generation. And so I applaud everybody in our community and there's hundreds and hundreds and thousands of supporters who have helped fund this capital campaign that, you know, I tip my hat to every one of them. And I, by no means, am sitting here and taking credit for anything because it's it's a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a humbling seat to be sitting in. Well, yeah, Main Street has even improved over the years. Yeah. Main Street's really definitely. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just, it's taking time, but it's it's gradually you can just see the all the improvement. In it. Yeah. So there's a lot of nice things happening down there. Even yeah. a fresh paint job, you know, makes exactly. all the difference yeah, in the world. To put it that good. simple, even just it just is. a building having a fresh, you know, a fresh uh, face right. makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Hello, welcome to what's new. Hi, this is Pat. Uh -huh. Hi, Pat. Got hey, a Tom, I actually have a question. Yay! Hi, Hi Joe. Hey, hey, Pat. Pat Parker. I applaud everything that's going forward. I too am excited about the new things in St. Genevieve. But everybody knows me. I keep taking a step back into history. So let me ask you, do you know when the building was built? Do you know anything about the history of the building? You know, I, I have just a very pedestrian history, Pat. You know, I, I would certainly defer to uh, people like Bob Bueller. You know, I, uh, the Rosier building was actually a building called uh, by the Yokerst and Yaley family. And there was a, a business there called Yokerst and Yaley. And so um, the building was, um, I, I don't know the exact date, but then it burned down and then it was rebuilt. Uh, but I don't have the exact dates of that. Um, and, you know, uh, maybe we can get that for a later time. I should have it. And when you ask this question, I, I feel very uninformed because I spent so many years of my life there. And I, no, should, I, I, I should know, I should know that, I should, you know, it, it's kind of a weird feeling. For many years, I couldn't wait to get out, and now I can't wait to get back in. And I so I'm, I can, I, I'm going to uh, well, find that information for you. Uh, talked about on that location uh, a place called the Union Hall. But I think that must be maybe what burned or was torn down or, or something. But I just thought maybe you would know a little bit more about it. I'm 
Yeah. Now, you know, as, as far as my early recollection, the, the back, before we added on the, what was considered the grocery store in the back, there was a, uh, a lumber yard there called Morrill Lumber Company. And, oh, wow. and so. Porch has got wood from the, from the Morrill Lumber Company. Right, and so that was the back side of, of, of that. And the, one of the more unique things is that every time I was in, in trouble, and it would, that happened pretty frequently, you know, uh, I would have to sweep the store and burn the boxes, and we had an open ash pit. And, and now as an adult, I think, you know, oh my goodness, we had an open pit and fire burning like crazy in downtown St. Genevieve, and we are next to a lumber company. <laughs> I can tell you that probably wouldn't be occurring today, you know, but uh, so. Okay, I'll hang up, bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. But there was that more lumber yard, was there? Yes. Yes, uh -huh. there was. Yeah. Huh, interesting. Yeah. I remember that when I moved in. That was torn so. down only in the what, 60s? So. Uh, that was probably in the 70s. 70s? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I moved here in 60 and it was there in 60. Yeah. Hmm. And now the I Wieners think, what worked there? Uh, Peck. Peck and Carl. Yeah. And yeah. And I think you make a good, really good point in that, that when you do something, it, it makes your neighbor kind of look at what they have. Mm -hmm and think, if they're doing that, I can do this. And so you mentioned like a fresh coat of paint. And so as property owners in the downtown area um, sort of see the kind of commitment that is being made at the hotel and the parish center, um, if, if you feel that your property needs that fresh coat of paint, go out and do it. Exactly because this is a unique time in our history that uh, people are looking at us like never before. And the more we can do in, in, in a way that we can join forces, and um, I think it's going to be a more powerful experience. So. And we have seen a little bit of that. I think in some, some of the homeowners, just even in the downtown area, see a little sprucing up maybe mm -hmm. I think even in the outskirts area too yeah because I know like Market Street is used a lot oh, yeah. it's an in and out street from the highway mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> I always think oh my gosh people should cut their grass <laughs> <laughs> now for people that did not go to the open house and they had it when they had the blue lines on the floor right. would you want to kind of give a description of what the going to be on the top floor and the bottom floor? Yeah, the top, uh, the top floor will be uh, a gallery area, uh, kind of, and a performing arts and band, and a, um, a meeting area that will have, you know, all the necessary technology for um, uh, uh, business meetings and things like that. So um, that will be the, the primary part of upstairs. Now, the performing arts center can also be, um, uh, converted very easily into a smaller, uh, a smaller reception area that, for uh, you know, for showers and banquet area, um, like family gatherings, or um, I gave a tour today, and and somebody said, well, I'm going, I, I need a venue that um, uh, about 400 people, and I said, well, I would ask you to look at our downstairs banquet area but also combine it with our upstairs area where you can use both floors in a very kind of um, uh, shared uh, space that, you know, part of this might be if you have, uh, you, know, you can move people up and down the steps in a kind of a cool way. Mm -hmm. So upstairs will be performing arts bands and a meeting center and a gallery. Uh, in the bottom of it, of the two story will be the banquet center and that will be 250 to 275 um, in um, uh, seating capacity. And then where the dime store was, mm -hmm. and so if you don't, most of us know kind of what they, when we say right. the dime store. Sure. Right. Um, <laughs> that will be the early childhood uh, center, and back where the grocery was will be uh, St. Vincent de Paul and uh, the fitness center. And uh, so that kind of gives an idea. And so if, 
if somebody is relatively new to our community and they really don't know where the dime store was or the clothing store or the upstairs furniture store or the grocery store, uh, give me a call and I'll explain or give them a tour. Yeah, that so, would be, yeah. Tours would be yeah. Nice, yeah. And yeah. Now, there's what, four classrooms? There'll be four, four classrooms. classrooms, yes. Uh -huh. And then they have a child size uh, lavatory, bathroom. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're They'll also have. And is there a meeting room toward the front? Yes. Also, and a play. Is that their play area? The no, there'll be an inside play area that will have where you look at the pictures of the renderings of this building. It has that colored glass, mm -hmm. and so it'll have an inside play area for our children. So, you know, so even during the most inclement weather, uh, that the people will, uh, the young people will be able to expend some of that energy. that energy that comes with three, four, and five year olds. <laughs> oh, they have lots of energy. Yeah. yeah, lots of it. Yeah, and so um, uh, people are also asking what the projected opening dates are. We're still staying firm with the completion date of late October. Um, we had meetings today with the faculty of, of Valley Catholic, and we talk about how we transition, you know, our kindergarten rooms there and our, and our, our early childhood, the preschool rooms there and move things around. So we're looking at that and, and we plan on, as I think they said before, uh, in the latter of the fourth quarter, we're going to have some soft, um, um, events, meaning um, we need to practice a little bit before we go out and open it to um, wedding. I, right. I don't want to be the person right. who um, who screwed up somebody's wedding. <laughs> you know, exactly. I, I guess I shouldn't say it like that, but I don't want to be that person. And so, you know, through the latter part of November, December, January, and February, our goal is to have a series of social events there that will allow us to go through a practicing experience mm -hmm. that as we enter into that march going forward, we probably are going to be certainly not seasoned, but we probably will be a little bit more experienced. Right. Well, that'll be a good time to have a chicken dinner and a bingo then. Perfect. Try it out. Perfect time. Yep. You know, and I, I think one <laughs> of the things that is so you know, St. Vincent de Paul is probably as good example as, as any, you know, it's about individuals giving up their time. Uh, I think one of the things as I became even more integrated in the school and parish, just how much people are willing to give up their talents. And so as we are planning the banquet center, you know, we have individuals that have hospitality experience and event planning and and talent within our parish that all you have to do is ask and they're willing to give of their time. And you know, that's... Volunteerism is the greatest thing in the world. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, you give of your time, but you get back so much more. Mm -hmm. That makes you feel good. Yeah. It does. Yeah. I volunteer out the nutrition center and I wouldn't trade that for anything in the world. I love no. it. No. I enjoy every minute of it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I think you, um, you have to be sort of, you have to have very narrow blinders on not to see some of the positive things that have been happening in our community, not only in the downtown, but you know, as I mentioned, St. Genevieve High School and, and their school system and some of the wonderful things that are oh being gosh. done there. Uh, our St. Genevieve Hospital, and uh, some of the health offerings that they have. And, you know, we're, we're for a town of 4,500, um, we're extremely fortunate. And there's momentum building. And probably, you know, I've been around in and out of St. Genevieve. I grew up here, I left for a while, and I came back. But I don't think that I have ever seen the sort of momentum uh, that is building in St. Genevieve that I see today. And I say that, and not, not with um, rose-colored glasses, but I say this in, in the most honest way. There's tremendous momentum, positive momentum being built in St. Genevieve right now. And I think it's, I think that turnaround really is young. I think it's, I mean, in the time that I've been here, mm -hmm. which is only the beginning of six years, mm -hmm. uh, I think that turnaround has, 
I'm watching that happen. Mm -hmm. It's not something that, you know, was happening when we got here. Mm -hmm. And oh, we, you know, we realized as, <clears throat> excuse me, as we moved in or came to uh, house hunt in the area, et cetera, that, uh, that it is a very unique community mm -hmm. because you do have two extremely strong high schools in a pretty, in a pretty small community. Mm -hmm. And that, that was just, um, we've lived several places and it, that was just very unique to St. Genevieve. Yeah. It's really interesting. And now, like you said, I mean, you can, you, you really, you can feel the, the vibration almost getting stronger and stronger. Yeah. And that's, and I think with the completion of that building, and uh, I'm not sure what's happening to the other you know, building, a catty corner to yeah. it. Uh, if something oh, else comes in the there, roof used to be. Yeah. you know, if something comes in there again, mm -hmm. and and uh, yeah. and I think by the Rosier Building opening up, that will happen, and something will will open there and will stay there because it'll be just wow. the whole downtown atmosphere, and uh, and that would be, that'll be. And I understand the new Eagles Building or the old Eagles Building. That's yes, that's, that's a restaurant. Cool. And I, I understand it's just really nice, very inviting. That's what everybody's heard. Saying, yeah. Just wonderful things so far. And yeah, that's great. It, Good and to yeah, see. and 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 I, you know, it's um, I hate to say it, at my age, um, I, although uh, I look in the mirror and I realize how old I am, but you're I look young. Like, I'm young. <laughs> <laughs> very definitely. But very young. <laughs> I have so many people that I grew up with uh, that are sort of at those final stages of their career that are building homes and buying homes and in St. Genevieve because although they've left and they've been gone for a number of years and they've had extremely successful careers, St. Genevieve has always been home. Mm -hmm. and, and I could go through a number of people that I know uh, that have invested and built and are excited about um, the opportunity of coming home mm -hmm. again. And when those people come back, they bring a sort of um, new energy mm -hmm. and an appreciation that also becomes contagious. Right. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about uh, where we're going. And there's so many people on Main Street that have come here from St. Louis. They came and loved our town and they bought, bought in down there. Yeah. And that's, that's where they're at because they love St. Joe. Do we have new artists coming? Of course, I only left for two weeks, so I, oh, I like it that too. That doesn't count, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have any new, new artistic talent coming into town? That you've um, there's a, there was one guy talking about maybe Buying a house here. Oh, well, that's nice. He's pretty well notary. Yeah. Pretty, pretty well up there. Yeah. But for a small I don't know community, if he will or not. We'll have we have a lot of talent in this town. A lot of talent. A lot of smart, intelligent people, and a lot of natural talent. Yeah, and I agree. And it, also it is, a lot of common sense. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. If you stop and, and think about it. Yeah. You stop and just you know you can you just sort of look around at all the talent in the it's just so it's just like it's natural I mean it's just I think amazing Saint, yeah I think St Genevieve is one city town whichever you want to call that has had more successful people who have been presidents and vice presidents of big companies and very successful people hmm. I mean it's amazing all the kids that went through Valley and St. Jen that are executives mm -hmm. or own their own businesses Part and have foundations and just all kind of things that they've done. Yeah. Yeah. Part of when I visit with high school, you know, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, you know, uh, particularly in St. Genevieve, I always tell them, be proud of where you're from. Right. Um, and because, and, and don't be apologetic because you're going to meet individuals from here that are going to create paths of opportunity mm -hmm. unique that, um, that individuals that grew up in St. Genevieve are going to reach out and, and help pull you 
through life and your career, unlike probably, and I had a recruiting firm that represented hundreds and hundreds of companies, and there's a uniqueness about about this in this thing. You know, if 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 you're with Boeing or you're with InBev or you're with uh, McDonnell Douglas, uh, you know, or you know uh, Express Scripts, there are people from St. Genevieve and leadership positions that will help pull individuals um, because they grew up here. Yeah, they're and like mentors to them. They're mentors. Mm -hmm. And so part of this is in, in this whole development thing that we're undertaking at Valley Catholic and St. Genevieve Parish is, is to connect these generational opportunities um, that gives people an opportunity to give back to individuals like themselves maybe 30 years ago. Right, right. And, and it's going to create unique opportunities for them and unique opportunities for the young men and women that are just beginning to move forward in life. And so as Director of Development at Valley Catholic is, um, gives me a unique opportunity to, uh, to put these components together. And that's probably one of the more exciting things that I do. So that's great. It's it's wonderful. Well, I wanted to ask you: Are the windows going to be open on that side on Third Street? Yes, they're working on that today. Oh, they are. Yes. They're going to yes. open all those windows on there. Yes. Yeah. It's I thought already. it was such a shame to have closed them. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Somebody asked me when that occurred. I remember as a youth. Don, you can open. come up. We, Don is going to be our, our guest, too. He's going to come up and tell us all about the new um, transition from Channel 98 to 991 and 7 to 990. So you can well, come on in, Don. <laughs> We're ready for you. And you don't and mind you guys if, if keep I talking. Absolute, no, you I'm going to keep talking. You know, I'm, I'm not going to compete with Don. No, you know, well, when he gets smart. here, he can start talking. But yeah, you guys yeah. can keep, keep it going until the Yeah, end, yeah. 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 <laughs> And you know, I think you know what you all do here is really an important uh, service. Well, we hope we're reaching we hope a lot of people <laughs> and giving them information yeah, about cool. the town. Yeah, that's what we want to do: educate the people and yeah, and let them know what's happening in our town because there's so much going on that people we do miss might not know about. Yeah, that's well, there's lots of people that really don't yeah. know about some of the things. Yeah. Because when we bring it up, I've, I've had sort of people say, well, I didn't know that. Yeah. I said, well, good. I'm glad you're listening to the show. <laughs> before, you something. <laughs> yeah, before I forget, there's a play. It's a bold accounts. It's um, School for Wives by Miller. That is very great. I, I think this is the second year they've done it, maybe third even. That's Friday the 22nd, and again on Saturday at 6 on, I'm um, 7 on Friday and 6 on Saturday. It's outside in a tent, and it's a really nice evening. It's great. So if you're <laughs> around town, go down there and grab your chair and watch it. That's right. And they also have Bolduc, those Bolduc days going on too, and that'll be on uh, from 10 to 4 on Saturday the 23rd and Sunday the 24th. At the museum, hmm. the place and the they'll have Dr. Uh, Robert Engelbert, professor of history at University of Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. I can't say that word. It'll get you. Sat It'll get you. you. Say it. Saskatchewan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> He's scheduled to speak at two at the Valley House. So, and, and that's another exciting thing too, where they bought the bank and they are fixing that up oh, to be yeah. the. Uh, uh, I know I'll say the wrong people. Wait till Don gets here to tell you who it is. And also, I might say too that that uh, this is the the class of 20, uh, 2015 is the 100th graduating class of St. Genevieve. It High School. is, yeah. My son is one of them, and uh, I just have to throw that in. But also, we have a we have a, an event going on at uh, KC at uh, the KC Hall in Bloomsdale on Friday or Saturday, the 23rd Grad Jam, going on all day. If anybody's interested, chicken dinner and all the the good stuff. Well, and we're going to be out of town. But hey, we're yeah, really every proud. Time we're so really proud. exciting. <laughs> I know, I know. Town. But that's going on, and, and they could just call uh, 
Kelly Zokowski at the high school if they need Call who? Kelly Zokowski at the high school. Oh, okay. At St. Jen High School if they need information. She's our class sponsor. Mm -hmm. A lot going on that, lot going on that weekend. It, it, there it is. Ooh. The paper's full of things. What is the, who's got the bank? The daughters of the American Revolution or the? Uh, Colonial Dames. Colonial Dames. Okay, I knew I'd say it Yeah, right. they have that. They have the old uh, the uh, British Rams house. Yeah. Oh, they do. They have yeah. that. They have the Boldwick house, Linden house, the gift house, the bank, the property there. Yeah. And, and then they, there's a house on South Gabbard that they purchased. I can't remember what that was called. But it, it connects to the parking lot. So they've got a, a oh. little path through there. Oh, wow. The small white, the small white house? I there? don't recall. But... Uh, that's what we talked about. Last time I talked to Leslie. Maybe, Maybe Leslie Barker. If you're listening, you can join us. Yeah, call <laughs> us. Call us, Leslie, Leslie and let on. us know. Leslie yeah. On. Yeah. She's I'm, been on already. I'm going to exit. See you later. I'm going to exit. I'm going to. Oh, gonna, you're going to leave. I'm going to take okay. off. Well, thank you very much, you, Joe. You have for the uh, the honorable so Don Pritchard. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the courtesy thank of asking. And any time you want to come back on and. Yeah. Clue us in on something? Yes. We'll be happy I don't to know have if you. I can clue you in on something, but it's always well, a pleasure. Well, sure, it's happening, you can yeah. let us go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Take care. Uh -huh. Good Take night. Care. Okay, Don, let's hear what's happening. Well, the we got the announcement oh, uh, last week. We met with Neil Gill. He is the government relations manager for the uh, Charter Communications Cable Company up in St. Louis. Came down, talked to us, and the Channel 798 board. and. Uh, the city administrator Martin Tolman said basically what you're watching now is analog TV and it's coming to an end October 7 no longer exist so those of you who have well all TVs will have to have boxes now uh, to take the HD signal that will be coming from the cable system and uh, it's exciting it's, it's, it's a real neat development the trouble is there will be an adjustment period for folks up until now, if you had basic cable or expanded cable, you didn't need a box. You could just plug the cable right in the back of your TV if it was cable-ready TV, and you, you're good to go. And you could, have your, you could string your own cables around the house and have 10 TVs on there, no extra charge. That was one of the selling points for having cable. Uh, but now you will have to have a separate one of these boxes that will take the signal from the cable system, the uh, digital signal, and convert it uh, so that your TV can use it. And it uh, doesn't matter whether you have a cable-ready TV. Uh, there was uh, a mention that uh, some people have these TVs that have uh, cable card access ports. I don't know, I don't, I've never seen one. It's probably a smart TV. Yeah, well, no, I've got a smart TV, oh, but it doesn't have doesn't a cable have access card as far oh. as I know. Mm -hmm. And those would be less expensive to get from Charter. Uh, but you but still have if, to have a box for that? But you still, no, you wouldn't have to, buy, your, your TV would, Oh, operate without yeah, a box, okay. but you'd have to rent the little card. Um, and what that know. is, basically what the cable box does is limit you to whatever tier you, you're paid for. See, otherwise you'd be able to get everything and they don't want, if you're not paying for everything, they don't want you to get everything. So, <laughs> so based on the tiers, they'll be able to, from their headquarters, Tell what tier you're go on. into your TV box and program it to show what you're allowed to see on the cable system which is the basic reason to have the box. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for the lowest tier customer, those are the ones like me who have antenna, ant what they call antenna basic, which is I get about 27 channels and that's it, and it, I get the broadcast channels and a few of the cable channels, and 7 and 98. Uh, we will actually get a box free for a year or two. I haven't really heard clearly what, and but if you're already taking the full package, you'll have to buy your box. So they figure you can afford it. I guess, I guess that's the problem. If you're, if you're paying you know, the full package right now, then they probably figure you do. So they're, they're really making it much more similar to satellite. Basically, right? yes. It's going to be much more similar to satellite. And there's some other things. And if, if Neil Gild was here with us, he could tell you a lot more fluently what's going to happen. All I know is the date is October 7th. I do know that Channel 7 and 98 will, will not be here, uh, will be moved. Uh, we will have, Channel 7 will be on 990, and uh, Channel 98, which is what we're on right now, will be on 991. And how we refer to them, St. Gen Info will be Channel 990, and St. Gen TV will be 991. 
because we're afraid that if we we've been focusing on channel 7 and 98 for so many years right. that should they ever move this again I don't want them focused on the channel number I want them you know like on thinking of, think yeah. like the weather channel or the uh, you know oh, the different sure. you know something like that you know <laughs> like it, it, it's not related to the channel number you can have the weather channel on one channel in one town another town but you know it as the weather channel right. so the, so that's the idea the, the 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 nice thing or the exciting thing about this is that for the first time ever channel what we have now is 7 and 98 mm -hmm. 990 and 991 will be seen in Perryville as well as in St. Genevieve. So our program footprint will, will expand considerably. And people who are in Perryville will be able to watch this program, for example, live. <laughs> and I know Mar Marianne, Marianne Otto will be very excited about that because well, she's yeah, in Perryville. that's where she's from. And I have relatives down there. So well, we can have them on. Yeah, we can have people. We can have some of those people there. If, if they want to drive up and visit right, with you, that'd be fine. Or they can call you on the phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's exciting. <laughs> and we will also be able to see Channel 7 that's in Perryville up here on Channel 985. So you'll be able to see what, what, what Perryville does with their public TV. They only have one channel. We have two. Uh, and that's, that's it. The big, the big issue is, and I know for the older folks, it's going to be complicated. You're going to get a box. Uh, you have to figure out how to plug it into your TV, how to how to hook it up to your TV, and all this. Now, are you going to have anybody doing that? And there, well, yeah, you probably could call Charter, but I will be doing house calls. Oh, you're going to be the house. Call. I'm going to. I'm going to. You could have a okay. band of volunteers. I'm going to volunteer to do that for our subscribers who have difficulty making the transition. I did that back when we switched to 98. Oh, did you? Yeah. I went oh, that's sweet of you. Because a lot of people didn't know how to get channel 98 on their TV. Yeah. And on some TVs, would you believe 98 is zero? Oh. Isn't it? <laughs> hey, well, you got to go find it on there then, Farm? Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, and I'll show them how to tune in. Mm -hmm. I mean, the best way to get someone to watch your TV station is go to the house and show them how to get it. Well, yeah, that's too bad. Yes, yeah, I don't want to oh lose our viewers. I no. want to, pay, I want to keep our viewers, so I'm going to go the extra mile and come out and help them. Okay, so we now, like so to keep the program not, going. This, this is not going to have live then, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll be live, but they won't be able to access the live through. St. Gen TV anymore? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, they can't. Oh, yeah. They be just will like, be able to. Yeah, it's exactly the same programming. No changes in programming. But I thought live you couldn't get right now. We're live right now. On? On the cable. The internet? No, no, no. no we don't stream. That's what I mean. We don't yeah. stream 98. There's no stream. Not for 98. Okay. Uh, too many copyright and and performance rights and all kinds of things. Because we, we do band concerts and... Oh, uh, I see. And okay. streaming adds another layer, and we did yeah. do it for a while. I wish we could still do it, but we're not doing streaming on 98. Uh, and the other thing is, if we stream on 98, people won't have to have cable to watch us, oh. and we get our revenue from cable. Right. You folks who are cable <laughs> subscribers, when you look at your bill, you see a franchise fee down there. It's about 5%. That's the money that goes to keep Channel 7 and 98 running. Oh, okay. And if, if we lose that money because people go to switch the ditch, a dish. I should, yeah, go to ditch. The yeah, go to the yeah. ditch. Yeah, they go to the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> if they go to dish, well, then we don't, there's no franchise fee. So we, start, we lose a little money every time oh, okay. someone switches us off. Hmm. So well, we, we lose our show. <laughs> that, that could happen. That could happen. So, so we need the revenue stream to, to do it. Now, we are streaming Channel 7 on the Internet, so you can watch Channel 7 live at stgentv.com, and uh, that's our bulletin board, and it shows the weather and the radar and the bulletin board, and that's, that's streamed. Oh, okay. And you can still get the videos of our show on that. On the Internet, yes, at stgentv.com. Yeah. Yes, we put them up on YouTube, and, uh, and you can access it through stgentv.com, mm -hmm. and, and I can see how many people watch each one. Oh, you can have some kids. I have some kids yeah. in, in South Carolina who do that every so often. Oh, they they want to see you. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> I'll flip it up That's and fine. see it. Because so I told you, them, I said, "Watch our Christmas show," and they did. <laughs> so you got a counter on there. Oh yeah, there's a counter. Oh well, good. So we can see how many people are watching the on, program on the St. John TV. Yeah. 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 That's great. Well, I hope we keep people watching. Yeah. Well, that's the idea. We want to make this pro, uh, this channel so entertaining and so interesting 
that people would, would do anything except turn it off. <laughs> and I know, I have heard from folks who have told me that the only reason they have cable is to watch these channels, 7 and 98. If it wasn't for us, they wouldn't. Well, if you think about it, what's, what's the only difference between DISH and cable? It's this channel, these two channels, that's it. That's the only that's difference. Mm -hmm. You know, since you're going to have to have a cable box for every TV, that difference is gone. Yeah, that's right. And that's uh, so, I mean, the DISH can give you all the channels that cable can give you except for 7 and 98, or what, it'll be 990 and 991. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the only thing they can get, that they don't give you. I don't know why, because I wish they, they'd take our signal and put it up on I the wish they would, dish, too. Yeah, that would be nice. And pay us. Does Direct TV do that? What if a lot of people would? Hmm. Uh, I don't know what it would take. I don't know what it would take. I really don't. I have not researched it because the mountain was too tall and I didn't want it. To, uh, I, knew, I didn't want anyone to mess with it. You may have to switch cables. Get your order. <laughs> but uh, if you have any questions or comments about the switch over, the changeover that we've been talking about, we have a phone here. You can call us at 883 7675. I'm just checking the clock to see how much time we had. It's uh, 10 after or 5 yeah, after. Well, I got a clock, right? So oh, you got one right yeah, there. So that's right. Okay. Oh, that's right. I'm probably going to go ahead. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Enough information. Well, yes, you yes, did. Yes, you did. If you want to visit us again and talk oh, yeah. about your come horses in. or whatever, oh, yeah. come on back. We'd be glad to have Take you. Take good video of them and bring mm -hmm. them in. Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. Well, a couple minis I could ride, mark the minis. Yes. <laughs> well, I ride your horse uh, around the table. That would be fun. That would be fun. I've seen those mini horses. Oh, they're fun. They're almost as big as a large dog. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, there's a lady out in, uh, is it Randolph County? Far Randolph County, maybe in Perry County, Illinois. She lives on, oh, what's the name of that road? Some kind of Lion Road or something. She raises miniature horses. Oh, Desi. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe sometime when, when we can actually come and talk about the uh, our mission out at our yes. Yes. ranch. Yes. If, yes. We ever, if we ever become official. Well, you know that's that's good information. Yes, mm -hmm. it, we ha we're happy to have anything on. So if you want to bring your horse stories to us, we'll take them. Glad to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks very much. All right. Thanks, Kate. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, it's it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a lot of work. Uh, the changeover. Uh, by the way, Perry will change this over on September 30th. Oh, really? So they're a week earlier than we are. We're se uh, the 7th of October. And um, I'm sure there'll be more information. There is an article in the Herald today that uh, describes the changeover. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Clementine was at the meeting that we were at, and she wrote a little article about it. And, and basically, it's just it's something the charter is doing. We don't have a whole choice of, in the matter. We just have to bear with it oh, and, and go and just proceed along. But uh, it's it's exciting. It, it will be nice to be in all digital. I think our our picture will improve. You'll see a better picture. Uh, we're not going to be HD, channel 790, it won't be HD digital, but it'll be standard definition, but it'll be, it will be digital, so which is, uh, right now it's an analog signal, but, uh, and, uh, and I don't know the difference between an analog Me and either. <laughs> you talk <laughs> agree. Well, the quality improves with is that, a, is that all it is? That's basically it. Analog Especially don't have all those little dots in them. Especially when you get into, uh, when you get into the high definition. TVs. Uh, that really, I, I just bought my first uh, big screen TV yeah, that, earlier right, this yeah, year, and, and uh, I just was so amazed to go to the HD channels and wow. Yeah, oh, it's, it's like. And it's now they got channel. Ultra HD, which is even more HD than the HD. Oh, I'm just satisfied with my HD. They're going <laughs> yeah. to they're gonna keep doing oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's they got some new TVs. Yeah, yeah. That's right. yeah, exactly. But I guess everybody's pretty much uh, informed on the changeover. October so I and I'll be back. You know we can we can do this in each of our programs yes. leading up to October seven. I don't great. want to I don't want it to be like when they when they did the over the air digital changeover. Remember that? And they had a lot of TVs that all of a sudden people said, "Well, there's nothing on the TV now." Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't want that to happen. I don't want people to wake up October the eighth and say, "I don't have a television. I don't have any, t I don't have any signal. I don't have nothing." No, that would be terrible. Have. That would be terrible. No, so. we, we enjoy doing this show. Mm -hmm. Now what else can we talk about? Start of school Friday? Right. Yep. Thursday, tomorrow at Valley. 
Oh, really? Valley Star? Mm -hmm. I, I don't and, remember. Yeah, I've Valley, Valley Star is I've got the lunch on I knew Perryville was opening And St. Jen's Star is Friday. Yeah, I knew St. Jen's Star is Friday. I kind of thought both St. Jen and Valley would open yeah. at the same time. Yeah, Mac it seems like starts, they would, but... Max starts Monday. Mineral starts Monday. Colleges always start later. My grandson. Oh, I thought maybe you were. I noticed that when I was in school. The colleges always start later than the uh, public schools. You usually system. do, yeah. I guess they think they can get it done quicker. You know, my I grandson guess. starts at uh, over in Illinois. He starts college. He starts Monday. To, no, yeah. he starts. Now, Park Hills, I think, the one of the teachers went to our Bible study, and she said they're starting later. Mm -hmm. But they go straight through. They don't take holidays. Mm. Until Thanksgiving. I know St. Louis, all schools are pretty much starting this week, earlier mm -hmm. this week. Uh, so, watch out for the kiddies. Yeah, the Illinois school. starts next week. You know, that's yeah. what, they've got the crosswalks all painted in town. Yeah, I noticed that. See they them were out doing them. that. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, that's a reminder that school's going to start. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. was nice with the good weather. That's what they said. That's very nice. They were happy with it. So yeah, it I was in the paper. town. Hmm? I went in town and went to my class reunion. 63 years. I was not going to ask. I was, I if, 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 she, if you wanted to volunteer, I was going to let you volunteer. But well, I didn't say how many years. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 63 years. Let's see, mine uh, this yeah, year, if I was back in you, like. my hometown of California, I would be, let's see, 69. It would be, what, 45? Yeah, 45th would have been. And I graduated in So I have five 70, more years to my trip. 97, 2007. Mm-hmm. I graduated the year we landed on the moon. I graduated 51. That was the year I was born. <laughs> <laughs> so we're 56 years. I'm old! <laughs> <laughs> you know, did you, did you notice that Robin Williams was, was born in the same year I was, 1951? No. He was 63. Mm -hmm. I thought that was so sad. It, it, it's that just terrible, sad. just terrible. That is it's too decisions. bad. And you know something he said? Uh, I, I'm not going to quote him because I get it messed up. But I saw the quote on Facebook and I thought, boy, that's prophetic. Uh, he said, you know what's worse than dying without any friends or people around you who care? Is dying with no one. Oh, I can't, I, I'm sorry, I just can't do it. There was something on there about that. Right. But I can't remember it. Uh, Something about, about having lots of friends who didn't care. Having lots of friends and no one cared. Yeah. And everybody was saying he was so nice. You know, oh, yeah. yeah. He, he, was was a he was crazy. He was the best comic I ever saw. I adored yeah. him. Oh, yeah. He was just wonderful. I, I've, I remember the first time I saw him was on Mark and Mindy. Though he had done stand-up comedy before that, but like Seinfeld had done. And I didn't know about him. And what's funny is, is, uh, is I grew up in Los Angeles, which is where he was performing at some of the comedy clubs. Uh, but uh, he uh, he broke into television with Mark and Mindy. I was I was thinking that because that's the first time I ever saw him. I love, love that, that show. I oh. just we had to watch that show. Linda and I had just oh, yes. been married a few uh, year or so. Ray was on just as as we were getting married. Seventy. We got married in seventy two. And I remember we always watched Mark and Mindy. <laughs> of course, all his movies were just great. I mean, just super. Oh, they always were. And at any time in his program, I was wondering how they were going to write him off of that program. I think it was canceled. Was it canceled? And, and there was there were stories on the internet that maybe that was one of the reasons why he killed himself. I don't know. I can't imagine him being depressed with the outgoing spirit well, that he gave. Well, a lot of people do that to yeah, cover up. Yeah, the, exactly. They, they overcompensate, and that's their compensation. Uh, and depression is such a terrible, evil thing. It's it sad. just really gets. Yeah. Let me tell you, when there's you no get talking down in out it, of it. When you get down in it, it's very, very hard to come out of it. Yeah. It takes you a long time. And uh, it's just sad that, that he had to go the way he did. And, and Yeah, he had so much to give. There are three movies I read, three or four, three movies that he has finished that are going to come out. Oh, my word. Oh, what? Because yeah. any time that he was on any of the talk shows, oh my God, I couldn't wait to watch Oh, him. yeah. But he's got three new movies coming out. One's, one of them is an animated movie, and the other two are, you know. I and one's know a drama, I think. See, I missed that announcement of, that said that he had passed away. I got in on it the next day. 
but it does have uh, three new movies coming out, so we'll be able to watch them in three new movies. And they were going to, they were, they've been talking for a long time about doing a Doubtfire 2. And now that's, that's pretty much not going to happen. Is it, it wouldn't be Mrs. Doubtfire without him. No, no, it couldn't be. Yeah. Because he made it. <laughs> yeah. 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 He made big thing. loss, big loss, and and Lauren Bacall passed away, and that's yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Uh, she was she a great actress, and uh, she and Humphrey Bogart. Oh man, what a oh. <laughs> and see now now you're recognizing something. See, you know what? I don't I don't see the new crop of actors like I do. People like Lauren Bacall and Humphrey Bogart and John Wayne and no, and uh, Clark Gable and and. All those people, uh, Jimmy Stewart. I was watching a Jimmy Stewart movie the other day. Oh my! They just don't make them like that anymore. Just they, you don't have that no, star power anymore. You don't have that, and I don't. I don't think you have the producers that actually come out with good basic movies anymore. Good basic stories. They come out with these freaky things that is so far out there that it's. Well, that's what. Well, it's yeah. Just, they, well, it's nowadays crazy. you think you have to have the car chases and and the and the the, the special the effects, stuff. or 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 people will not come Watch. to the movie, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but I don't think that's necessarily so because there's a lot of people that well, watch the old. Well, speaking movies, of Robin so. Williams, Dead Poets Society was a very intellectual and, and very yes. Uh, you know, it was uh, subdued. It was not uh, over the top Transformers kind of movie. Not that no. I'm putting out Transformers, because those movies are fun. They're, They're fine, fun. Yeah. You know, we saw Godzilla. It was a Godzilla we saw the other day. Yeah. yeah I think it was. I and, like and, and, you know, those are fun. Yeah. Oh, it was Planet yeah. of the Apes, the, the new Planet of the Apes. We oh. saw that. That was interesting. It was fun. And I remember the original with Charlton Heston. I don't think they're ever going to match that. Because, again, Charlton Heston was at uh, star power. Well, I watched um, Cole Porter. The oh, yeah. Cole Porter. Oh, yes. Last, oh, my gosh, that was so good. Sure. But, and there's some nostalgia there. We're, we, you know, we were a little older. My children probably wouldn't have the same no. reaction. But to us, it, it brings back days that were simpler, that were, that were less troublesome. And I still, like, I still like to go back and watch the old musicals with Gene mm -hmm, Kelly mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and Judy Garland and all them. Yeah, I can't tell people where TMC will be on the new system, but uh, that's one of my favorite movie channels. Oh, yes. That's what I was watching. That yeah. was Cary Grant. Oh, yeah. They, and Alexis you know, Smith. It, it seems to me that if I see a movie in black and white, I know I'm going to like it. Isn't that yeah. something? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> but it's the truth. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. If it's black and white, I know I'm gonna like it. You and that's why I like that. YouTube. YouTube has so many black of the old movies on it mm -hmm. now, uh, that don't cost you anything. You just sit there and you can watch them. Yeah. It's really kind of neat. Well, uh, I don't think we have any questions, so. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah, yeah you come on the next time and. Yeah, there may be some questions. I'll tell you when we'll we'll have questions. It's after the after switch. After the switch. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We we'll need you on here. Except, except, except that we won't, they won't be able to watch us to call in and ask yeah. the question. Oh my gosh! They, they may come in. We may have them in the building. They may. We'll we just, can invite them. We just put, put them in, in the paper, paper and say, "Come on in if you have any questions about the cable. Sit here and we'll answer them." Yeah, come in and watch us. Well, you guys close out the program. It'll take me about five minutes to get downstairs. Probably okay. I have to go all out that door. All, all right now. Yeah. Well, when it would be so much shorter. Michael. It would. Why? Well, that's secure. They, they would keep that. They, 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 secrets in there. We might. There are secrets in there that yeah. be behind those walls. Yeah. Yeah. The NSA yeah. may know what's going on over there, but we'll never know. <laughs> hey, you got it. See you guys later. Uh, okay. Thanks, Thanks Don. a lot, Don. Okay, there's a car cruise at McDonald's. Uh, I've got your phone. Okay, okay. thanks. So don't call me, guys. On the 16th. Which it's Saturday. Car cruise at McDonald's. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's a tourism meeting on the 19th. I'm reading this out of the St. Genevieve Herald. I haven't got my paper And there's yet. <laughs> a parish picnic in Kaskaskia, which is always fun. Oh, I Down at Immaculate that. Conception on August 31st, the last day of the month. And let's see. Oh, we have a folk musicians. 
at the Cave Vineyard. And uh, barbecue at the Eagle on the 16th uh, at A and K. So you can go out to A and K. On, let's see. Yep, you can go out to A and K on August 16th and have barbecue. And it's for the walk to in Alzheimer's. And let's see what else. You know anything, Marianne? What's that's oh okay. Thank Genevieve, graduating class hundredth anniversary, and they're going to do a play that was originally done uh, by the graduating class a hundred years ago. Miss Pat Parker, who calls in, is our faithful lady. She um, had a copy of the play, so there St. Jen is producing that. That should be interesting. That that should be. I don't remember the name of it. Do you? No, I don't. <laughs> no. Okay. It and does it say in there, what does that say, graduating? It doesn't say anything about that, does it? No, it doesn't. Oh, well, let's see. Nope. They just have a grand jam I'm celebrating the 100th St. Genevieve Art Two School di District graduating class be held from noon to midnight, August 23rd, at the Bloomsdale Knights of Columbus Hall. Oh, Activities yeah. include horseshoes and washer tournament and horseshoes and slip and slide, face painting, cakewalk, hula hoop contest, chicken dinner. Oh my gosh. That's what Kay was talking about a while ago. Chicken dinner from 2 to 7 and a poker table from 3 to 7 and a silent auction and the high school faculty band is to perform. All smart proceeds will pro, uh, benefit the project graduation. And when is this? That is on August 23rd out of Bloomsdale. Oh, 23rd. So that would be Saturday, I think, isn't yeah. it? Yep. Yeah, that's just sad. Okay. Okay, well, I guess um, Don should be back downstairs now, so we'll tell everyone good night. Thank you all for listening. And have a wonderful week, two weeks, and we will see you then. Right. Good night. Good night. <laughs>